Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use radio buttons in Android Studio. There are two methods, or at least two methods that I'm going to show you in this video on how to use them. First method would be to change on button click. So what I mean by that is you have a prompt or whatever, and then you get to select an option. Only one option, that's what radio buttons do. Check boxes, you can select more, but radio buttons are just one. And then after you're done selecting, click Submit, and it'll tell you a response based on what you selected. So I asked, do you like John's Android Studio tutorials? And I said, I have no opinion on that. So in response, I say, the only opinion I have on you is that you need to make up your mind. But if I were to select, I passionately love them, and then click submit, then I would say, well, I love you too. If I said I have a disinterest in John's Android Studio tutorials, then I'd say, well, I have a disinterest in you. So that's how that works. We also have the direct change method. So in here, there's no submit button. You just click the one you want and it'll automatically update the words below. Pretty nifty. The button one can be used more if you have a lot of different sections. So if you had like a question here, another question, another question, and then get your results, where this can just be more direct. So let's take this piece by piece. We need a change on button click uh, activity. So we're going to need a new activity. So go to our project under Java and under your package name and right click and go to new and go to activity and then go to empty activity. You don't want to use basic, it's a little more complicated. So I would choose empty for now and then name it whatever you want. Click finish and then we'll open it up and we'll have a little bit of code here. But when you do it, you'll probably only have a little bit that looks maybe like this. We need to change it a little bit because this is not going to run our app. Okay, so let's go through it line by line. First of all, we're going to need to declare radio group. Now, I realize I probably named it a little bit too long, of a, but it'll work. It's just more particular for people who are just starting out and might not understand how things relate. But basically, we have a radio group right here. And then we're just putting a name on a radio group. We're not assigning it to any actual radio group. We're just saying that there's going to be one with this. Next, we need to declare a button. So we have the type of button. So instead of radio group, we're now using button. We could also use text view or whatever. So button and then button submit. So we're just naming this button. It's not actually created yet. It's not set to equal anything. It's just a button. Next, we're going to need a text view. And we're going to call that text view text view results. Again, we haven't set it to any value. There's no such thing as text view results. So like if you hover over here, it'll say it's never used because we don't have any value set. And then we're gonna make a string. And again, we're not gonna set it to any value. We're just declaring it up here. Go down here to your method on create and underneath set content view, you're gonna need to add a few things. Well, quite a few things. First, we're gonna take our radio group and stick it right down here. And this is where we're going to de uh, define it. So we're going to set it equal to a radio group, which is find view by ID, r.id, radio group, John's Android Studio tutorial preference. I'm sure that made no sense to a lot of people. So I'm going to show you where we found all this information. Well, basically, we're setting it to radio group. So we're just making sure that Android Studio knows what we're talking about. We're not talking about text view or button. We're talking about a radio group. And we're finding which radio group that we're going to use. So we go to find view by ID and we go to R for resource. So it's looking throughout our app and the resources. And then it's looking through the IDs and it's finding whichever one has the ID of this. We also have a XML file that we created earlier when we made our activity. So we go to that and we see, well, of course, yours will be blank. But we have this kind of information here. So what you need to do is create uh, the text view, which would be your header, a little preview over here. So we got this text view, right? This text view is our header. Basically, it just asks a question. Pretty standard stuff. Next, we'll do our radio group. This can be a little complicated because radio buttons need to be inside this radio group. So we have a radio group here, but notice we don't close it. We just, I'm not sure the terminology actually here, but it's not closed, it actually closes all the way down here. So inside the radio group we have radio buttons. So 
So the radio group itself is at ID radio group John's Android Tutorials Preference. So like we saw in our class, we have the same name. And since we're in the XML right now, we better get the rest of it out of the way. So we need to add a button below the radio group. And it's pretty basic. Just make sure you have an ID for your button so we know what button we need later. So now I'm going to put button submit. And make sure you put IDs on all your radio buttons along with the text because we need to find each individual button and set a value to display on screen using the certain option. And then finally we're going to need a text view and also it will need an ID. So for now we're going to do text view results. We're going to set the text equal to your, your opinion will appear here. So we see that here. And unless we have click submit with an option selected, it'll just remain the same. But as soon as we click the submit button, it'll change based on what we selected. So let's jump back into our change on button click class and continue where we left off. So now we're going to define our submit button. Like we said here, we only declared it here. Or I'm sorry, we only, we only declared it here. But here we're defining it. And we're going to say that this button submit is equal to a button. Not a radio group, not a text view, it's a button. And we're going to find which button we're using by going r for resource dot id dot button submit. So if we go back to our XML, we'll see our button is button submit. So that's where we're getting the ID from. Next, we're going to define our text view results. So text view results equals text view, find view by ID, and text view results. So if we go here, sorry, if we go here, we find text view results. Next, we're going to create a method that will handle our option selecting for when we select options in our radio group. So first, we have our radio group. In this line, we just declared which radio group we're using. But in this one, we're actually going to add a listener for the radio group. It's not too important that you know what all this means. It's just you're going to put the name of the radio group, and then you're going to dot set on check change listener and then in a parenthesis you're going to add new radio group dot unchecked item uh, unchecked change listener and then go down to here at override at override is important you do need it but it's not necessary that you know what it does create the method public void on checks change so we're just creating a method called on check change and we need to pass two things in one is our radio group right here and we're going to name that as group. And we also need to pass in an integer, which is our checked ID. And I'll go through what all that means in a second. So inside our check changed method, we're going to define and declare in one line. Inside of the onCreate method, we're declaring the radio group and nothing more. Inside here, we're defining it and nothing more. But in here, we're going to do both. So we're going to say we have a radio button, and that radio button is RV. We could change that to whatever you want, but radio button's pretty short and simple. We're going to set this type, which is radio button, and where we found it. So it's group. It's a group of the radio group dot find view by ID, checked ID. So now we're going to add a switch case statement. Basically, instead of an if else statement, which just checks if something is true or not true, and then goes back to or goes to the next item and checks if that's true or not. This is just a much more advanced method of figuring out if else. So basically, we're going to switch between all these different radio buttons. So we're going to do radio button, which is each radio button in our group, dot get ID. Our first case would be radio button, I passionately love it. What's that supposed to mean? Like, where do we get that ID? Our first button here is radio button, I passionately love them, which corresponds to I passionately love them option in our app and then we need to add some functionality to it it can't just be finding which one we're looking for so we're going to select set our selection to well i love you too what we mean by selection is whatever i selected like i selected this button so we're going to set the text text that goes down here equal to whatever i selected and then we're going to add a break and I'll explain what break means when we finish with the cases. So let's do another case. And in this case, we're going to be checking for the radio button. I somewhat like that. 
Again, we can find that in our XML up here. Notice our second option is a somewhat like them. If somebody does click on this one, the somewhat like them, we will set our selection or text equal to a somewhat like you. And then we'll break and add another case for another button. So we're gonna check our radio button that says, I think they are okay. Third option here is, I think they're okay. And we're gonna make our text equal to, well, I think you're okay. We add another break statement, then another case. Now we're gonna finish out all the buttons we have and our text, what we're gonna equal it to, breaking them all out. But what break does is, let's say I did click this one, it's not gonna go run through all these other options. After our switch statement, we're going to need to end it with a bracket. And then after that, we're going to need to end our method here with a bracket. And then I'm not sure if what you call this, but this part here, it has a parenthesis, fill a parenthesis, and then bracket. So we're going to need to end that bracket down here and then put a parenthesis because we need to go back to this one and then a colon. I know that's pretty odd. It's just the way it is. Now we need to create another click listener. Here we had an on checked listener, but now we need a click listener for our button. So we're going to find our button. Here we named it button submit, and then we found what button we were using. And then we're going to add a dot set on click listener, and then a new view dot on click listener. Doesn't really matter what this means, it's just as long as it's on your screen, that's what matters. Going to add our override, and then we're going to create the method. So public void on click view view. Basically here we're going to set the text of this part right here. This is our text view result. And we're going to set it equal to selection. Selection being each one of these. So whatever option we selected, it's going to be set to that text. Then we're going to end this out with another bracket. And then again we're going to need this weird bracket, parenthesis, and then colon. And then after that we're going to need another bracket to finish off our onCreate method that we've been working in this whole time. And then after that we have one last bracket which will end the class. So that's how to do the change on button click method or idea of radio buttons. Our next one deals with direct change. Now this is a little bit different, it's a lot easier, but basically we're going to need to define our radio group again and our text view. We don't have a button or selection or anything like that. Our selection is just automatically defined. Like as soon as we click each button, it's just automatically set. So let's go inside our onCreate method under set content view. Again, there's going to be no bracket here and we're going to set our radio group equal to radio group find view by id set it to that so let's go to our direct change this is what it looks like in xml see we have defined our radio group as this id and we have defined our text view as find view by id r dot id dot text view results so we have our text view results right here and then we're going to set a check listener on our radio group. And again, I've already run through most of this here. Same pretty much everything, uh, except for here. We're going to set the text of our text view results. Remember, we set the ID here of text view results. And we're going to set the text of that to, well, I love you, or well, I somewhat like you, depending on each option. Hopefully this video made sense. If not, please contact me with any questions you have. Go ahead and contact me through the comments, through email, through my website, whatever works. But I want to help you in any way that I can. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.